those types of things really, really uh, look the most impressive. With companies spending minimal time with your application, how can I get more time with the hiring manager? It changes that maybe one minute that I'm spending on a resume into maybe like up to five minutes. Oh, what up, data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst, and my channel's all about tech and skills for data science. And in this video today, I was curious about learning more about how one can stand out in the field of data science. We'll be looking at it from the aspect of an employer, but I feel like these concepts that we're going to cover today can also be applied to how you can stand out in the community of data science. For this, I reached out to my friend John, who's a data scientist that has both an engineering degree and a master's in data science. He has worked the last decade in data science related roles and more recently has acted as a hiring manager in this field. Most hiring that was happening uh, in North America would go through me for technical evaluations. Through this role, he has found some valuable insights into how to get noticed by employers. Even before you get to the interview stage, really looking at resumes is, is a big thing. Um, and, and looking at the past experience and what they have in a portfolio uh, is, is really big. But before we get into the theme of this video, I think it's important to first clear up a misnomer about entering this field. A lot of people that I talk to are like a lot of people that have questions are always thinking like you have to get a degree in data science to start with to get into data science. And it seems like it's actually completely the opposite. Uh, truly, the, the types of backgrounds you can have to get into this field are so broad, but the common thing is just having more computational tools in your belt to, to tackle all these problems. To be clear, your educational background doesn't necessarily determine your fit for a job in data science. Instead, it's more about what tools you know and how you showcase them. But I, I will tell you that if there's a personal website or probably a GitHub, it changes that maybe one minute that I'm spending on a resume into maybe like up to five minutes. Oh, so basically, how can I get more time with the hiring manager? Maybe have this self-designed uh, GitHub page or website that makes you grab more attention. Yeah, absolutely, and I'll tell you that um, that in, in many cases, the GitHub or the personal website or portfolio otherwise was a key factor in saying this person's fit for an interview or not. The general concept, right, is that you should have some work that you're readily able to show off. Okay, so let's get into this and understand the strategy and how you can showcase your data science skills in a portfolio for others to better notice this. John has a three level approach for this. Product in my opinion, would be the best uh, kind of highest level. This is how you make it impressive. The, the next would be kind of either a, a blog post, uh, a personal website outlining these things or a, a data storytelling uh, aspect. Um, and then, then afterwards would just be doing uh, the thing. We are gonna start with the most basic approach and work our way up to the higher levels while giving examples of each. So let's start with the scope skill set. At a minimum, this is how you should be looking to display a certain skill. There's two different questions you should ask yourself. The first of which is, what would be a good skill to show that I know how to do? That's that's the first one. So whether you're wanting to show off that you really understand uh, linear regression inside and out and everything that entails, great. That's perfect. If it's SQL, great, perfect. The second thing is, um, how can I find some way to present that convincing. Some ways to do that would be do it on a data set that hasn't been seen before. Great. That that shows me that you're not, you know, taking co cookie cutter code somewhere and just redoing it. You're having to analyze something new and show that you can take away the right uh, inferences from that data. So what does this look like? John has his own portfolio example of this. So I have on my GitHub a specific link to a repository called Data Science Portfolio. And in that, if you go there on the readme, it'll say, hey, this folder is where I'm showing the fact that I know how to write good object-oriented code in Python. So if you click here, here's what you can expect. This is where I'm showing that off. Here's where I'm showing off the fact that I know SQL. And like, this is kind of what you should expect if you go in there. And then you, if you click on there, hey, well, here's, you're, you're looking at my object-oriented stuff. Here's the object-oriented considerations that I wanna highlight for you. And take a look at this file if you wanna see more, this file if you wanna see more. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it where you can uh, uh, build in that filtering very easily. That just keeps it so simple. But then from a hiring manager's perspective, it just makes it so much easier for them because then they can go in and verify these skills so much quicker. And it just, you're, you're setting it up for them to make it so much easier to potentially even get in more and they don't have to like search to try to find this skill set. 
Let's now get into the next level of showcasing your skill, and that's through the use of data storytelling or a storyline. On a next level, other than just scoping out neatly, hey, this is the skill I want to show, things that are very impressive tend to have lots of visual elements to them. Um, and I'm going to be able to latch on much more clearly to a story presented very well visually. So especially interactive visualizations, maybe you have a really good Tableau dashboard that you've put together before, or Power BI or something along those lines, that can be super impactful as well, especially if there are lots of interactive elements to that. So what does this look like? Jessie Ray, a data scientist at Apple, has a great example of this. She took our running data collected through Fitbit and utilized Python to analyze this data. Using a blog type format, she outlined questions she wanted answered and then went about analyzing and finding these answers to those questions. So I think John sums up why displaying a skill in this manner is so powerful. It's not just about the code you're writing, it's about inspiring the confidence in your uh, interviewer that you're gonna be able to generalize that super well past the, the direct situation that you're doing. Finally, let's get into the highest level where the goal would be to build a data science product that can be utilized by others. Product, in my opinion, it would be the, the highest echelon because that's what you're seeing mostly in industry. Data scientists and data analysts don't really work in vacuums. They work uh, in the context of either a team where communication is needed or a product where you need to be able to plug stuff into other stuff. But why is John considering this the highest level of displaying your skills? It shows to me a ability to think on kind of the next level if you can turn something that's now not just a notebook, not just a dashboard, but a product that, you know, it may be in some alternate universe, I'm actually selling to people for money. Those, those types of things really, really uh, look the most impressive. So what is a good example of a product? A more complicated example would be that of my friend Jack, who built a fantasy football draft calculator in Excel. Because of the popularity of his Excel spreadsheet, he went on to build a monetizable application that utilized Python and the Django web framework. All right, so let's end this with a quick recap. I would say all of uh, all of those kind of three levels, the, hey, here's some neatly scoped skill set code. Hey, here's a good uh, data storytelling element. Hey, here's a product. All three of those are very good. I don't want to give any misconceptions. The, the fact that you're doing anything is such a big positive. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.